Welcome to this channel. In this video, we will try and understand the disease which is known as the black leg disease. And sometimes it is known as the quarter ill, quarter emphysema, black quarter and quarter evil. These are the other names of this disease. So further about it, we are going to learn in this video. So without further ado, let's dive into tea. Its agent is right. I have to select the pen and then I have to write. Its agent is the Clostridium joy. It is an anaerobic bacteria, means it can only survive in the environment where the oxygen is not present. And therefore, uh, they get entry into the animal with the help of the worms, right? But it is not always the case. It is the motile and gram positive bacteria. The, its reservoir is the soil. It lives basically in the soil and soil contain many type of the uh, bacteria. One of them is the Clostridium choi. It is an acute fatal disease and infectious disease. And this disease, it, we can say that hosts are sheep and cattle. They are the two hosts which are most common and favorable for this Clostridium choi. If you talk about its pathogenesis, so in the soil, if you talk about its pathogenesis, then from the soil, these spores are present and they are taken up by the mouth and they are ingested into an animal body. They are taken in the GIT tract and reach into the intestine, right? And in the intestine, they went into the bloodstream, they open their spores, they uh, they come into the vegetative form and they, you know, disseminate their toxins and they to their toxins cause the uh, black leg disease in two uh, stages. We are going to further discuss about it, how uh, they cause the disease. If you talk about its etiology, if you talk about its etiology, then we can say that spore remain in soil, recent evacuation or after flooding. Its causes may be after the flooding, the chances of this disease, uh, you know, increases abroad and ingested after the ingestion of the spores, they went to the GID, uh, transferred to the bloodstream, deposited in the muscles and to the other tissues like the lungs, kidneys, they went to the other tissues as well, to the spleen as well. In the cattle, they are endogenous. They are not exogenous, they are endogenous inside the cell, inside something, uh, you know, inside the organ, they produce the toxins. Most cases are seen in the cattle of the age of 6 to uh, 24 months old. And the disease usually occurs in summer season and fall and is uncommon during the winter season. Means the summer is the peak time where the chances of this disease, chances of the disease increases. Further, if we talk about histology in case of the sheep, so in sheep, this disease occurs mostly due to the wand. The wand may be through the shearing cuts, stocking, crutching, or castration. Fatality rate, fatality rate approaches to 100%. If the animal get this, then 100% chances are there that the animal will die. And most often it happens that without, you know, animal showing a sign, they, you know, the animal, the owner saw them just lying on the on the floor and they died, right, in a, in a dead condition. So without predominantly, you know, showing their signs, the, the animals, you know, death of the animals occur. In case of the cattle, with or without wand, uh, the disease can, uh, you know, cause the infestation and infection in the beef cattle. It happens mostly, and it is endogenous. As I have already discussed, there are two stages: early stages and the late stages. In the early stages, serohemorrhagic exudate occur. In the late stages, gases accumulate, and the, due to these gases, the muscles become discoloration, black coloration of the muscles occur. Incubation period is 1 to 5 days. Incubation period is almost 1 to 5 days. And if we talk about the clinical signs, then sudden onset, they, after the spore ingestion, after the wand and through the wand, their entry, after that one thing, uh, they start their clinical signs. There is no any gap between that. Acute and severe lameness can occur. Animal cannot walk easily. Uh, of the hind legs specifically. Hind legs of the animal means 
there are front legs and hind legs so the hind legs you know uh, over there the limbless occur the animal cannot move properly the pressure in the animal is common fever anorexia edematous and creepient what is creepient basically over here the crepitation definition is written the sensation of air under the skin right if if the animal if you touch the animal and under the skin we feel like air is there so these are chances that there are chances that there is the crepitation edematous and crepitant swelling hip shoulder chest back and neck uh, on the other hand death may occur within the 12 to 24 uh, 48 hours abnormal breathing emphysematous and swelling of the musculature if we talk about its diagnosis we we'll see that presence of crepitus and swelling of large muscles in such a state right if you see if we look at the animal and the animal is swell the the major muscles the large muscles of the animal are swelling then we can see then we can you know uh, we can you know diagnose that yeah there may be the clostridium chauni in the body of an animal and there may be the black leg disease and the other thing is the crepitus if we just touch touch the animal skin it would be it, it would feel like that there is the air inside the skin so this is the another thing to just diagnose and the ultrasonography examination of the affected area we can ultrasonograph with the help of the modern technology post mortem after the death of an animal we can see that we can uh, look at the culture and aerobic culture of affected tissue so these are certain points through which we can diagnose the animal and know whether you know what type of disease is over there if we look at the treatment if we find an animal is having the black leg disease so certain treatment are discussed antibiotics anti inflammatory drugs analgesic drugs fluid therapy vaccination uh, is very important oxytetracycline meloxin and its control is you know basic thing for the control is the vaccination and uh, the vaccination should be disseminated in the in the farm house and it should be available for every animal uh, you know after their birth to their death they should be given because they are in you know they are uh, they are under attack they are circumstances of being attacked by such virus such bacteria and move animal from affected pastures and calves two months also old should be uh, vaccinated twice a year and these are certain important points black leg disease is an endemic disease right there are types endemic and pandemic right so this is an endemic disease inhabiting to a particular area and where the you know whole population is affected whole population of the uh, you know at the same time whole population is affected that is the endemic disease so if the one animal is affected so many animals get, could be affected by it because due to the presence of the spores and most cases of black leg occur during the warm months the disease is anzotic in area with a history of flooding colostridium choi can produce a large amount of gas a metabolic by product which is known as a gas gangrene and these are the pictorial depiction over here you can see uh, the animal is the hind legs of the animal the large muscles are swelled right the large muscles are swelled and along with this the 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 muscles are you know showing the uh, discoloration or the black color so these are the pictorial depiction hope you understand by this so this is all about the black leg disease hope you understand this if you're new to this channel subscribe to my channel and thanks again